All right, guys, Steve with FlyFly Fly Drones coming at you with another video. Uh, this time we're going to do a new video, kind of an all-in-one guide for modifying your Mavic on the Mac. Uh, the last video we dropped was specific to PC. Now uh, we're going to do this on the Mac. So this is going to show you the end-to-end -end steps, the tools, the steps you need to roll back from latest firmware, modify your flight parameters, and then we're actually going to update up to a latest version so you get all the features. Uh, this also works for the P4, the Mavic Air, Inspire 2, and the Spark. Uh, use this information at your own risk. Uh, if you don't do it right, you can break your aircraft. Uh, don't fly by any airports, by people. Don't fly like an idiot. Fly safely uh, and fly all the local laws and regulations, you guys. We don't want to screw it up for anyone else. All right, so if you've got a Mavic Platinum or a Mavic White or the Arctic White, or you've got a newer version of a Mavic that was made after September 15th, you're going to need to install a mini SD card inside. Uh, take a look at tools.retroroms.info uh, for more information. So right now I've got a Mavic Pro. I've got the latest version on a Mac. So what we need to download on Mac, uh, Java Development Kit, a couple tools, a couple versions of DJI Assistant, and a couple versions of firmware. Uh, I'll step you through it, so don't worry about it. Uh, we're then going to install the Java Development Kit, uh, the two versions of Assistant, and we can start the update process. Uh, not going to lie, it's not quick, not necessarily easy, but uh, we're going to get you through it. So let's start out by downloading the two versions of Assistant. Uh, you can go to flyflydrones.com, right to the download link section, and just click the two versions for Mac, the 1.1.2 download link, and then the 1.2.3 download link. Go ahead and let those download and, and finish. I always try to keep these, uh, these links updated. Next, let's download the Dumble Racer tool. Go to GitHub at the link I've got here. It'll also be in comments. Once the GitHub page opens up, go ahead and click, uh, I think it's releases there. It'll say two releases. Go ahead and click releases. And then we're going to click on the racer.jar file, and that will download that tool. Next, we're going to download the Dumble Flasher tool. Uh, go to that link there. Uh, props to JKs for the really great tools here. On this one, go ahead and uh, click uh, the releases tab. Go ahead and scroll down. We want the version 1.02. Click on the dumbleflasher.jar file, and that again will download the file. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is download the firmware file. So we're going to download two of them, and we're going to roll back to the .700. So go to the, uh, the website here, uh, click on the folder I show here titled bin. Then uh, in this list, go ahead and scroll down and pick Mavic Pro and then find the 103.0700 Mavic system bin. Should be 104 megs. Click on that and it'll start the download. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and navigate up a couple folders and uh, we're gonna find a modded file as well. At the end of this, we're gonna install the, the modded 104.0100. So click uh, parent directory and then go into the custom rolled firmware folder. And then go ahead and click on the one at the very bottom, 04100. Um, dot bin, it's a 102 meg file there. Uh, big credit to uh, the guy that does Dank Downloader, Dank Downloader tool. Uh, I think this is the website behind all of that. Uh, next, let's go ahead and download the Java Development Kit. This allows us to run the last two tools that we uh, that we just downloaded. I'll put the link in comments here. Go ahead and uh, accept the user license agreement and download the one for Mac OS. There is a little bit of work that we have to do here to get things set up, but once we do, things are actually fairly simple and straightforward, so don't worry about it too much. Okay, now that we've got all the downloads finished, we're going to go ahead and start the installation process. So uh, let's start with Java Development Kit. Open up Finder, go into Downloads, and then you'll see the JDK10 uh, DMG file there. Uh, go ahead and find that. We're going to install this. So double-click it. It'll do its little thing here, whatever it does, opening and extracts the contents, then it gives us the, uh, the ability to install. So go ahead and double click there, we can install it. Go ahead and hit continue, hit install, and if it asks for your password, put that in. Uh, the link that I give you should have nothing bundled in it, no adware or anything, so you shouldn't have to get a, you know, that kind of stuff, like Bonsai Buddy, uninstalled, so uh, feel, feel safe that that link is a good one. The uh, Java development kit here will run. It should go pretty quick usually, maybe uh, one to two minutes. Uh, go ahead and hit close. You can keep the file. You can move to trash your call. Go ahead and close that window. Uh, now we're going to install the two versions of Assistant. That's a little strange how we do this. Um, first we're going to do is install the new version of Assistant. Then after that we're going to move it to the trash. We're then going to install the older version of Assistant. 
Then we're going to go find the one in the trash, restore it, and macOS is going to give us the option to keep the two. Uh, and then we'll keep them side by side. Uh, and then we use the, the newer version to read the firmware, which isn't allowed in the older version. And then we'll use the older version to modify the parameters, which isn't allowed in the newer version. So it works out pretty well, uh, just kind of an inconvenient step that we have to go through. So here I am installing the, uh, the newer version of DJI Assistant. I think it's 1.2.3. Uh, sometimes macOS will block or it'll ask you, you'll see their system extension blocked, uh, that you need to allow the driver uh, or the extension permission. So go into uh, security preferences and make sure to allow those. Don't ignore that, otherwise your aircraft will not be able to connect and you're gonna have a bad day. You're not gonna be able to finish this process, so. Okay, the installation's done. Uh, go back to Finder. We're gonna open up Applications, and then we're gonna take Assistant and put it in the bin. So move to Trash. Think of that as a, uh, a temporary storage location. So uh, within Finder, go back to Downloads, and then find that version, the 1.1.2, and we're gonna go ahead and install that package file now. Again, if it prompts you, uh, go ahead and go into System Preferences, allow it, click Continue. I went ahead and sped this up just a little bit. Um, if any of the, the drivers or the extensions get blocked, again, please allow those. We wanna make sure that it can connect with the aircraft, uh, but you shouldn't have any problems. So go ahead and click Close, click Close. Uh, you can keep that, move it to the trash. I'm just gonna keep it for right now. Okay, so now we're gonna go to your trash. Uh, in my case, there should only be one, one file in there or one program, which is Assistant. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna basically restore it or put it back. Again, we're gonna use the old one to modify the parameters. Uh, we're gonna use the new version to read the firmware version. The two can't do it, uh, do the, the opposite. And so we gotta, we gotta keep that. This is just a way to do it. So go to trash, uh, click on that. We do put back and then say keep both. Uh, if you do keep both, and then you go into Finder Applications, you'll see both of them. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and rename the one that I just did, and uh, rather than be Assistant Copy, which was one I just restored, I'm going to rename that to Assistant 1.2.3, so I know it's the new one. This just makes it a lot easier, and boom, you've got Assistant uh, installed side by side. So Now we need to uh, reboot the Mac. Yes, Macs do need to reboot. Um, you guys can hate me for this all you want. Macs need to reboot. We're going to do a reboot really quick here. Uh, one of my secrets is, haha, I'm actually running this in VMware, which is why you can see that activate Windows thing on there. So, all right, we're good on all that. Now let's go ahead and unlock the parameters in the system. Uh, go into Finder, go to Applications, and then we want to pick the old version of Assistant. Uh, I'm going to click on it, and then we're going to pick Show Package Content. So, Finder, Applications, the old Assistant, Show Package Contents and then open up app files. And what we need to do is we need to find the file in here called main.js and we need to edit that. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, in my case, like right click on it, open with text edit. Now, if we go about, I think it's about a hundred lines down, we're gonna find something very particular we're looking for. Uh, what this function does is we're gonna change it so that it opens up some hidden parameters within DJI Assistant. So this is the slash slash main window dot web contents dot open dev tools. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to kill those two slashes in the beginning. We're just going to delete those within it um, and then leave all the rest of the lines. So if you see those two leading slashes, go boom, boom, get rid of those, delete them. Save and close this file. Should be pretty simple and straightforward to do that. Uh, and now we're ready to start what I call the process. Everything is set up. Now we need to actually get into it. So first we're going to run Dumble Racer. Uh, so what you're going to do is power on your Mavic, Hug it in, connect it, open Assistant. Don't click on the aircraft in there. Um, go ahead and close Assistant, and then open up Terminal. From a terminal, type in CD space downloads with a capital D, and then we're going to type in Java hyphen J A R space Dummel Racer dot J A R space A C. Now, what this does is it runs a Java file, one of those tools that we got earlier, against the aircraft. It's going to break the anti-rollback tech that's in there, and it's going to allow us the next stage, or the next step, which is to start the update process. So it's going to show you a list of devices. Pick the DJI device, the lowest number. So in my case, it's going to be number three, the CU USB modem, uh, whatever it says there, and then DJI. I pick three, I hit enter, and then what this is doing is it really does it in two steps. It's sending over some commands, some, some, uh, some requests to the aircraft, 
Uh, and basically what it does is it unlocks the file system and it allows us to copy over a firmware file, invoke a rollback command, and start the rollback process. So uh, that's all done. So once that's done, we're going to turn off the Mavic, turn it back on, uh, open Assistant, don't click on it, and then close. So in my case, I went ahead and I've powered off the Mavic, I've powered it back on, I'm opening up Assistant, it's just going to show in there. I'm not actually ever going to click on it. I don't need to go in there just yet. Um, and so once I get done fudging around with the mouse here, I'm going to close Assistant. Again, I open it. I see the device. I close it. Go back to the terminal. So we're going to go back to the Downloads folder. I'll type CD backslash Downloads with a capital D. Uh, and then I'm going to type LS hyphen L. This is going to give us a listing of all the files that are actually shown within here. Um, and so we're going to need to do two flashes. We can use the old assistant to watch the updates, and then in between we're going to use the new assistant to review which version we're actually on. Uh, again, the ls-l command uses a, a list of files. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in this, this long command, java-jar, and then demo flasher, uh, and then the, the file name. So let's go back to terminal here, uh, cd backslash, or cd space downloads. I'm just going to list the files that are in here. We're going to type in java-jar, dummelflasher.jar hyphen T for target, AC is the aircraft, hyphen F, and then we're going to type in one of those firmware versions above, V0103, 0700, and just make sure that you type this in exactly as it's shown above, case sensitive, uh, and then once you get in dot bin there, go ahead and hit enter. Very similar to the last tool, it's going to give you a list, so pick the DGI number, uh, press enter. In my case, we're going to pick three. So this is where you're committed. You're fully committed to doing a, a flash and an update. So make sure that you've got the props off, the gimbal cover locker off, you've got a fully charged battery. Uh, go ahead and hit three, hit enter, and then boom, it's going to send the upgrade command over. It's going to copy over the firmware update file, then it's going to start the update process. Once it's done with that, and this should take about two to three minutes, I sped it up for the video. Um, once it's done with that, we're going to then go back into the Assistant, the old version of Assistant. The new version actually doesn't work. It won't read this for some reason. Go, so go back to the old version of the Assistant, and we're going to watch the upgrade go. If you want to see the whole screen, you have to log in. And so hopefully you know your DJI account information, because we're going to go back and forth a bit during this video, uh, and you're going to need to log in a lot. So I've done my best to, to speed up the, um, the video here. Uh, this is the old Assistant. I'm going to get rid of that window over there. We don't need that for now. Again, I don't have to log in right now. Um, I can still see the update. It's just that the login screen kind of is over all of it, so you can't see it very well. And so I'm going to log in here. We'll click on the Mavic, and this should pop up. And then, boom, we see the, uh, the update starting to go. Sometimes I see that it'll, uh, when I connect, it'll actually error out, hit retry. It'll do retry on its own, and it progresses along just fine. Usually it's 12 to 16 percent, 13, 14 percent is very common, uh, and I see that, that quite a bit. So just let the update go. Uh, in this case, uh, we're going to go ahead and speed it up a little bit. Um, you just kind of want to watch this over time. It should take, I would say, 8, 12 minutes on average is what it takes, maybe 10 to 12 minutes sometimes. Uh, in the case here, it's going to get up to 82%, uh, and then it's going to go very quickly from 82% to 100%. Um, and so I know that I need a second update, so it skips some modules there at the end. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to bounce over to assistant, or over the new assistant. Um, <coughs> Oh, sorry, so you can see 82% to 100%. So I want to take a look at the version. I can't see it in this version, so I'm going to close this, go to the new version of Assistant. Uh, this step is optional. You don't have to do that. You can just go straight to a command or the terminal, and you can run the next update command uh, just for educational purposes. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just look and see what the version is. You can see here it's 104.0300 with a minus on the end. So that means that it's only partially installed on the rollback. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to Close out of Assistant entirely, keeping the aircraft on the whole time. Don't power it off, leave it plugged in, uh, and then go back over to Terminal. Um, if you use the same one that you had last time, you can just push up on your keyboard, and it'll just replace the last command that you had in there, make it super easy on you. Um, otherwise, type that command in again to update the firmware. Go ahead and pick the prompt if you're asked to, uh, to do the prompt. Oh, sorry, for the, uh, the port. It's going to go ahead and copy the file over, it'll start the flash process, and then you're good to go. So at that point, the update process has started. 
you can then go back to the old assistant. We can open up the old assistant and we can see the, the update process going. Again, as we're bouncing back and forth between tools to see the update process versus reading the firmware version, it, it removes the token for the login. And so we're going to end up having to log in back and forth um, between the tools. Um, you don't have to go into the new version of Assistant to verify the version. I just wanted to show that for the, the interest of the video here. Um, so that's kind of why I'm, I'm going back and forth. Um, again, in the old Assistant, if you don't log in, uh, it'll still show the update in the background. You just can't see it very well. It's kind of a, a stuck overlay. That's kind of a, a pain in the patooey. So. All right, so go ahead and log in here. Again, this is my second flash of rolling back to the, the 103.700. Uh, everything started just fine there. I'm going to go ahead and speed the video up here. You'll see this one will actually uh, go a little bit faster, uh, and it'll take a little more time on some of the modules. You can see here it's going to spend some time at 88%. That's the camera module. Uh, so it'll roll up at 99%, and then it'll hit 100%, and we know we're good. And so now we should be completely back to the 103.700. Um, we're going to go ahead and go back to the new version of Assistant one more time uh, by closing out of this version, and then we'll be able to, to read the version from there. Uh, if it's fully back to the 103.0700, um, you're done actually in terms of if you want to just get the mods. And so if all you want is to modify the parameters, you're good at that point. We're going to keep going in this video and we're going to install that other firmware that we downloaded that's a custom world version of 104.0100. And that's going to give us the new version plus um, the mods. And so I like to be able to offer you know mods plus the new features. So. Uh, on this one, we're only going to need to flash one more time. So we opened up Assistant there. We verified it. So go ahead and close Assistant. Um, keep the aircraft powered on. You're good to go there. Open up Terminal. Go back to the Downloads folder. And then we're going to type in this command. Um, the command is the same. The file name is different. And so I'm going to list out the files here. Again, you'll see it there. Uh, we'll go ahead and type in the uh, the command, java-jar dummel flasher.jar space hyphen T space AC, do that capital, uh, hyphen F space, what is it, V01.04.100 underscore Mavic underscore DGI underscore system underscore no underscore FC underscore update dot bin. That's a, that's a tongue twister there. Uh, make sure that you get the case correct. Uh, you do that, and then you can pick the DGI device. In my case, I'm going to pick three, and then hit enter, and it's going to do the update again. Uh, so this one, we've gone back to the uh, the 700, going back up to this one. This one's custom because it's had the, the flight controller modules removed. And so we'll be able to stay on the flight controller modules from the, the 700 version. So we'll still be able to mod and do everything we need. Uh, but this also supports some of the, the features like panorama, uh, like quick shots, like some of the gestures, which is, is really nice that they, they put some of those out. So Let's go ahead and uh, now that it's done doing what it's doing, let's bounce over to the old assistant. I went ahead and logged in, sped this up. Uh, you can see there, the, the update's kind of going in the back. You can't see all of it, and so we're just going to go ahead and log in so we can get past that. Um, this will do its updating thing. And then once this is done, uh, I think we're going to speed this up for the video here again. Uh, but once it's done, then you should be able to go back to the old assistant. Uh, which we're actually in now, but unlock the parameters and, and be able to actually see everything uh, and be able to do what you need to. So let's let this uh, this update finish. We're going to close out. And then we're going to uh, go back into the new assistant and we're going to log in and we're going to verify the version. I know it's a lot of uh, going back and forth, logging in and out. You don't necessarily have to go into the new version of Assistant to verify the version between every single step. I, I like to do it, though, just to make sure I know what I'm working with. Uh, it does take a little bit more time, but it's probably worth the effort just to make sure that you do it right. So, Again, back into the new DJI Assistant. Uh, let's go ahead and log in there, hit Ignore, and then we look at the version. It's going to have the 1.04.0100. And it's going to have a, a minus behind it. So uh, we're, we're looking good there. So everything's set. Uh, let's go ahead and modify some parameters. So uh, we're going to close this version of Assistant, go back to the old version of Assistant. Uh, luckily, we don't have to log in on this one. So we're, we're actually done logging in. Uh, but when the old Assistant opens, in that frame on the right that we opened up, uh, go ahead and find Debug, change the 0 to 1, and then go ahead and hit Enter. 
and then click that X on the top right corner there just to close that little frame. We don't need that. And then go ahead and click on the, uh, the aircraft and it should load a whole lot more in here. Uh, my rule of thumb is don't click on it if you don't understand it. Uh, otherwise, on the left, scroll down and you should see parameters. Click on that and we're going to see some, uh, some new cool things in here. Again, you don't have to log in. Once we click on parameters, that login screen is going to go away. So uh, you're going to see that filter field there. That's where you're going to search. Uh, and so what you're going to want to do is basically search for your parameters. I like to hit the plus sign next to them, add them to my list on the top there as favorites. And then once I've added everything, I then go back through and I, I do the modifications. So this is the, the list of parameters. We'll have this in the, uh, the comments of the video as well. Uh, but basically, we're just going to kind of go in through here. Uh, the, fir the first set I'm going to do is the, the sport mode settings. Uh, the next one I'm going to search for here is actually going to be the, the GPS mode settings. That one's split into um, two different ones. One is with the obstacle sensors enabled. One is with the sensors disabled. So again, we're just going to find those. We're going to add those uh, to our, our parameters. Uh, that, that common use parameters, I like to call them our favorites, uh, up there on top by hitting the plus sign over there on the right. If you hit the uh, the wrong one on one, you can hit the minus sign on it above and it goes away out of your list. You can see there I just did that. So again, this next one is going to be for obstacle avoidance. Uh, the next one is going to be for uh, increasing our max speed. Think of that as upping your, uh, your rev limiter. Okay, after we do the uh, the max speed, there's going to be a couple ones that we're going to do for height. That's going to allow us to bypass any height limits that are uh, that are within the aircraft. Uh, if you do do this, um, please, please fly safely. Uh, don't fly high in any restricted airspace, anywhere near any type of airliners, or in any situation where you're going to put anyone or anything in danger. It's not worth it. Your enjoyment is, is really just not worth it, so... Uh, the other two there, we did the flight air restrictions, uh, the wind warnings, and then the last one here is uh, go home or the return to home speed. So, Okay, so now that we added all those to the favorites, I'm going to go ahead and run through them and do the modifications. Uh, this is the list of what I'm going to change it to. Um, again, I'll have that in the comments of the video so you can have that. Uh, quickly run you through them here. Again, the, the top one, this is sport mode. This is the tilt angle on sport mode. The more tilt, the faster it can go. Uh, the next couple, we're going to change how fast it goes up and down. Uh, the next one, we change the GPS mode tilt angle. Again, it goes a little bit faster. Uh, we change how fast it goes up and down here for the GPS mode. Uh, those up and down are actually shared between uh, obstacle avoidance on and off. Uh, we're going to up the tilt for the OA mode a little bit so it goes a little faster. Sensors still work. Uh, up the top speed. That's meters per second. Uh, the next one, we're going to bypass the height limit. Uh, the 500 meters that you see in the app will no longer be enforced. The next couple are basically just uh, setting some artificial limits uh, a little bit too high in case you ever don't have GPS. Uh, the next two, we're going to bypass the, uh, the restricted flight area and ensure that the maps are future dated. Uh, the next two are kind of cool or for getting rid of the wind warnings. You can set those a little bit lower, uh, 12 and 16 if you want, to make them just much less sensitive. I get rid of them. And then the, uh, the return to home speed on the bottom there or go home speed. All right, all the parameters are done. Now let's uh, change that battery over to non-DGI battery. Now the reason I do this is it prevents any forced landings at altitude or at low battery. Otherwise, if you go up high or you come down to 10%, that aircraft is going to try to land on you, and it's quite irritating. So hit that drop down, choose non-DGI battery, uh, pick LED warnings, hit these sliders down as low as they'll go, and you should be all right. Uh, I'm going to go back over to the parameters real quick, just make sure that everything's saved. But otherwise, we should be done here, and you guys should be good to go and ready to fly. Uh, you went through a lot there. Um, go ahead and quit assistant, power off, unplug your Mavic. I uh, recommend IMU and compass calibration. But otherwise, you're good to go, guys. You went through a lot there. That was a good job. Um, you know, fly safely. You know, I'm not here to adult you, but uh, fly safely, you guys. We don't want to ruin this, this hobby. It's really a fantastic one, so... Uh, thanks for watching. Check out our DJI Modding Lounge on Facebook or uh, drop by Slack and uh, say hey to the OGs. Thanks very much. We'll talk to you later, guys. This is Steve out. Bye.